The new turbo has arrived. You can see it's nice and shiny, nice lacquered body, no rust. The veins are really firm. They're not moving uh, in and out. There's no end. There's no sort of play that way end flow. I think it's called. There's a little bit of movement on it, as you expect in the up and down direction. You can see I've actually transferred already three uh, studs here and one of the exhaust studs. I'm just going to extract the other few from the old turbo and transfer them over to here before we can continue and go and fit this. The process for removing them is fairly straightforward. So what you do is you basically get two nuts. So I've basically wound on this first nut and I've got a second nut on the top. I need to loosen it a little bit and to do that I'll need a tap of the hammer. If you've got a vice that'll be great because you can see it's, it's knocking around everywhere here. My struggle is going to be that I don't have a vice handy at the moment. Before I refit the turbo, I'm just making sure that all the other ancillary parts are connected to it. And things like this, for example, there's the old air filter. I've just swapped that out. It's a good opportunity to do that. Take a bit of time over this. You know, we've got a new exhaust gasket, so we don't really need to use this old one. That's good. But everything else we're pretty much reusing. I've transferred all the studs across a bit of work. Some, some of them I actually had to use three bolts rather than two bolt trick. I've put a new gasket in on this oil drain where it drains into the sump, which is good. And I've loosely connected the banjos. Looking at it, I think I can actually get to these once the turbo is fitted. So if I have to tighten them up on the turbo end, that's no problem. So I'm going to leave them a little bit loose just to give me a tiny bit of slack. So all that remains now is to actually get under there, and I might need a little hand of this, to offer this up. And the main thing to really try to get into alignment is this drain into the sump. It's going to be a bit of a pain because it's a bit on a, bit on a wobbly, wobbly uh, connection here. And then of course the delicate trick of pushing all the banjos in. And of course you didn't necessarily see this, that the water pipe is actually still in place. I just loosened it this end. So it's going to be a bit delicate because you have to put that washer in when you reassemble the banjo and then it, you know, working from behind. But I, I still think that's the, probably the, one of the quickest ways without having to take everything out. So now all I need now is a helper. So we had some difficulty fitting this, so we took out all the studs and on each stud we cut an actual notch to allow a flathead screwdriver fit in. So then we had positioned the turbo in place and then posted the studs in from the top and then cranked them on. Now we're just going to put the nuts on here so that we can get underneath and then hook up all the banjo connections. So we've topped up the coolant, which we've lost obviously when we undid all the pipe work. We're now going to put some oil in here, and while the oil's going in, I'm going to disconnect the HT box so that we can turn over the engine and hopefully lubricate the turbo without anything actually starting. I'm going to crank the engine now till the oil pressure light goes off. If your vehicle is a little bit like mine and you've left it sitting too long, you might need to get a jump start on it. The oil pressure warning light's gone out now, so we're going to reconnect the HT leads and start it up for the first time. Oh, 
after a little while you'll notice that the smoke that's around the turbo disappears. That's old engine oil that's just coating certain surfaces and the lacquer on the turbo, that's gone. And then moving around the back, you'll notice that the exhaust tailpipe has cleared up a lot. Now, depending on how much oil has ended up in your tailpipe, it, that may well take a while, but just keep monitoring um, the inside of your car. Just monitor the oil pressure and the uh, temperatures of your various fluids um, as you're driving it for the next 500 miles or so. And after 500 miles, change the oil. It's recommended you change the oil and then you're good as gold. So no leaks, no rattles, no noises, job done. I hope this has been of some value to you and uh, I wish you all the greatest success in changing your turbo. As ever, thanks for watching. Thank you.